Welcome to a Magic the Gathering video. My name is November Lima, and we are playing some Best of One Alchemy, and we're going to do so with Celestia Clerics. There have been several uh, different color combinations of clerics ever since Alchemy dropped. It's been a very popular archetype because of Inquisitor Captain and just the amount of value that it brings. Being able to play a 3-3 on turn 4, that also puts out another 3-drop or 2-drop potentially. Um, it's just very, very powerful, and... Um, Along with that, we've got some other really good clerics that came with the set. Um, so, Sigardian of Angel is just really nice against creature decks, and Angel of Unity is really nice to boost your own creatures a little bit, and also have a flying lifelinker uh, that helps boost some of our uh, creatures that get stronger whenever I gain life. I also have a bit of a cheeky one here with the Book of Exalted Deeds. We all know how annoying that can be, especially in combination with Faceless Haven. So, that could potentially be another win condition if we don't do it in the air or with our big clerics. Um, but I've uh, playing this deck, I've had plenty of wins by turn four. Um, Elite Spellbinder kind of helps out with that because if we are on the play, uh, we can potentially avoid a board wipe on turn three, uh, being able to really finish off our opponent. So that is the deck. Uh, pretty straightforward. We got some pretty standard inclusions here uh, to gain some life. Um, Marius Call in case we flood out. Like I said, we have, need some Snowlands for the Faceless Haven. Other than that, it's just clerics gaining life, getting more powerful, and smashing my opponent. So let's get into some games, and uh, let's get the, the holy cleric power. Uh, let's, let's get it done. Okay, our first uh, match is against Tronbot. And Tronbot's going to find themselves in a holy mess. Opponent goes first. Um, it's not a great hand, but it's also not terrible. I don't want to throw it away. Um, I only mulligan if I really have to. Got this a little early, so I might play it out. However, I am going to start gaining some... Uh, I don't think I'm going to play it out just yet. Let's just go in and start with the white, see what happens. If I start drawing lands, um, I can always play it later. There's another land. Let's go ahead and do this. Let's play the Prosperous Keeper. Possibly start gaining some life. Looks like it might get shot down, which is fine. Our opponent could be on dragons. Being that this is all red, this is a dragon's fire, and they got dragon's sleeve, so they probably run the whelp. Which right now we don't have a good answer for. Okay. If they run the whelp, they have not yet, so that's good. I don't need two green, so we'll go ahead and keep the rest on white. I'm going to go ahead and play the two prosperous innkeepers here. If they have a cinder clasm, that's kind of a bummer. That's fine. I'm not going to save it. I'm going to get the treasure token regardless. Uh, let's go ahead and play the other one. Cycle a treasure token. That's no big deal. You're going to kill that one too? To be fair, if they're going to use all their removal on my innkeepers, I am totally fine with that. Sure, it's a way for me to gain life, but I've got more ways than that. There it is. This is going to get annoying. Okay. My turn. That's very good. Uh, so I'll go ahead and play this first. There we go. Make Voice of Bless a little bigger. I do want to shock this in, or bolt this in, if you will. That way I can protect it with Valorous Stance if I need to. Alright. We'll call it good. Okay, there's the Goldspan Dragon. We're gonna shoot that down instead, because we can. Let's destroy. Bye-bye. That works. That's actually pretty good. Let's go ahead and swing first. This is in the hand. Um, so being able to exile a dragon is going to make it a little harder again for them to cast it. Uh, let's go ahead and take the Inferno. The Inferno is now one last to cast plus two. So it's, yeah. Seven mana to cast. That's pretty sweet. 
shoot down to Unity, which is fine. It's gonna stop my live game for a little bit, but right now we're in pretty good shape. Gonna play this. That. We'll go ahead and swing with the Voice of the Blast. It seems a little silly to play uh, swing with the Elite Spellbinder. This is not generating any value for them at the moment. They'll be able to cast anything they have except for Inferno Star Mounts right now. So trading for the, with the Elite Spellbinder just doesn't seem smart. Okay. Now we are gaining. So I've got my snow and I've got the land. So if I get a uh, faceless haven now, um, then I can put it to where I can't lose the game unless they have uh, some kind of land removal or instant speed removal on the faceless haven. Gain some life. Should be illegal for mono red decks to gain life. That's just not right. Okay, that's pretty good actually. I like that a lot. Go ahead and play a Lunar Veteran. Think for four. Right now we're pretty far ahead. Air is the dragon. I going to say, I'd be kind of surprised if they attack with it. Seems silly. There is a Faceless Haven, so let's go ahead and play Faceless Haven. Um, let's see. So I think I can go ahead and do this. It's now an Angel. I can do this. On the Angel. And fast turn, and now I can't lose the game unless they destroy this. I don't know how they're going to do that. Unless they have a Guild of Ruins. That's fine. Now, hoping, hopefully this is not going to turn into, like, a grind fest. Because in reality, like, unless they have land removal, they should realize that I can't lose. That's fine. Uh, they can't do anything, so I might as well swing with this. And I'll go ahead and do this. I wonder if they realize how this works. I don't think so. I'm going to let them swing, go negative, and they can see it. Yeah, they, they don't realize it. That's kind of funny. I like this. Life game deck going negative and still winning. Really? You're just decking with the one? Why? I'm not going to swing with this. That seems silly. Okay, that's fine. We'll just keep generating board. Finally got the Trellisara. There we go. Gain some life. Ah, uh, sure. Just need to start getting more creatures than them so we can start swinging. Yep, that's fine. That way we don't have to win by them decking themselves. No attacks. Not necessary. I feel like... I feel powerful. I've never actually done this before. Not gonna lie. Like, typically this deck, I just... Outpound my opponent. I've never actually put a counter on Faceless Haven to win the game that way. Feels pretty good. I feel, I feel sophisticated. <laughs> okay, curious what they're going to try to search here. There's one damage to any target. Okay. Destroy an artifact. I don't have any artifacts.
That is fine. You do you, opponent. Attack. That's fine. No blocks. Eight on. There you go. This is when things get weird for my opponent. So I'll go ahead and... Oh, hey! <laughs> I was wondering when they were going to realize what was going on. Good stuff. Okay, going up against Nikki the Spoon. Nikki the Spoon is November Lima uh, the Cleric. Ooh, this is a nice hand. So do I open with Voice of the Blessed? I think I open with Trellisara because I can scry into another white source. Opponent goes first. So as long as they don't run too much removal, I should have a pretty solid uh, series of turns here. Got three lands, so I only need to draw one more land for Inquisitor Captain. So as long as we don't die before that, we even will survive some removal. This is actually a really bad matchup for me, but... Mono Black is probably the worst matchup for me, or Mono Black with some Red Splash, either way. Like, I'll take any kind of control deck over Mono Black with this deck. Simply because it's so hard to outgrind them. But, we shall see. They have a very, very hard time uh, figuring out what they're going to do here. If they're smart, they're going to sack their Shambling Ghast. Oh, well, that works, too. That's another thing you can do. Um, da -da 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 -da, what do I do? I think I want to play this out again. Let's go ahead and do this. And let's go ahead and just get the Luminous Phantom out. Doesn't seem smart to play any of these without any life gain. Okay, there's a brush stroke. So they've got a pretty solid curve here. Ah, uh, that's actually pretty good. So, I think I still open with Trellisara here. I should have played the Arctic Tree line. That was a misplay on my part. Uh, one that's probably going to cost me. But, what can you do? If you mess up, you mess up. That is what it is. I went a little too fast. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and do get rid of the Blood Artist. Or I just gain life. I think I do that. Let's get Trellisar a little bigger. Take the fifth land. Opportunities. Can't really do much about that. They're probably going to sacrifice their eye twitch to learn, which is fine. I'm going to have to get through that at some point anyway, so I'm not going to get too worried about it just yet. If they want to spend mana to remove Trellisara, that's fine, because I'm going to play Inquisitor Captain next turn anyway. Okay, going to go that route. That works, dude. That the worst, opponent. There's the environmental sciences. Gain two life and get a swamp. Okay, so they are like solid black. Um, go ahead and play this for a white. And let's get the Inquisitor Captain out. Inquisitor Captain, what are you gonna do for me? Not very much. Well, actually, this is actually pretty good. I don't mind this. So I can do that. Um, now, do I play Into the Blood of the Snow? Like, I could play Voice of the Blast here. Bump both Voice and Trellisara. Swing, but if next turn they could have Blood of the Snow. They're not going to get any value out of it, though. Except for wipe my board, and I got two more Inquisitor Captains. So, let's just make them have it. They don't run a full playset, I don't think, so the chance that they have it is not as big as it could be. Not like previous mono black uh, decks. Ooh, sweet. Okay, so let's go ahead and swing with these guys. Let's 
So Shambling Guest is probably going to take out the Prosperous Keeper, which will then trigger my Luminous Phantom. Oh, they're creating treasure building. Okay, that's fine too. If I were in their shoes, I probably would have taken out the Luminous Phantom. They did have it. Okay. Is that is too bad? What are you gonna do? It's a pretty painful one, actually. At least I gained some life from the Luminous Phantom, so that's something. I suppose. Get the Inquisitor Captain out. There's something to say for starting out with the Ride to Cloud 3, but right now I'm just looking for value. Let's get the Elite Spellbinder. Definitely Professor Onyx. They discard both my cards here. It's kind of a bummer, but it is what it is. So they're one mana shy of playing Professor Onyx, which is better than just being able to play it out right. They can spend all their ma mana to just go full on Inscription of Ruin. <sighs> Which would actually not be a bad play. Hey, Nikki the Spoon, what you doing? So, in their shoes, I'd probably get the Eye Twitch. Kill the Spellbinder. Yeah, ah, that's painful. Eh? Okay. So now I need a couple good draws. It's pretty good. Probably not good enough, but going to swing. So probably my only salvation here would be get another nutty Inquisitor draw. Um, or do the same thing I did last turn, which is unlikely, but it's possible. Another Inquisitor would be nice, but I don't think that's going to happen. I already got two in the graveyard, one on the board. I only got one more in my deck in 43 cards, so... Another Inquisitor is unlikely. This is why a lot of people like to run to Pyre. Um, I often find it a little too slow. I want to be a little bit more aggressive with this deck. One's playing, uh, actually surprised by that. They just want to ping me for more. So let's see what my top deck is here. I might just go ahead and move on to the next round because I don't think anybody's having fun right now. Except for my opponent, probably. There you go, they almost got me. Okay, Nikki the Spoon, you cannot do anything with one mana except for cycle this, so either do it or don't. Um, this could get me slightly back in the game. They've got seven mana. Let's just see if I can get back in the game with this thing. It's not much, but it's honest work. Okay. Let's go ahead and call it. Let's move on to the next one. Wanda Namera. Gonna be my opponent. Um, I'm on the draw again, but actually it's pretty solid hand here. Especially if I draw a green. So 
we'll see what my opponent is. Okay, well, uh, we're assuming that they are uh, puppies deck. There's the green source I was talking about. So I might lead with Trillasara, depending on what they do here. Okay. So that's fine. No block. It's three three. I want to get the voice of the blast down. Start making that bigger. So that can become a flyer, which is really nice. If they have a fight spell or a removal spell here, that's unfortunate. If they do not, I'm going to be able to power through quite a bit. The thing about the wolf stack that I've noticed is that once your creatures get bigger, they are in trouble. So if they don't have the early removal, you can probably steal the game as long as you have life gain and big creatures yourself. That's unfortunate. Okay. It's okay though. It's not the end of the world. We'll go ahead and play this. Play we'll gain a bunch of life. And get Trellisara on the board. Um, tempting, tempting, tempting. But let's not do that right now. Looking for something that can protect my creatures. Um, getting the book probably wouldn't have been that bad because I could have played it, and then this, if I don't draw more uh, life gain, I could always do the inscription of abundance. Um, okay, my opponent just pretty loudly gave away. They don't have uh, any bump spell for this. They are going to go to night here soon, so I want to be careful in what I do. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. Play the elite spellbinder. Make Trellisara a little bit bigger. Another Trellisara. I don't need that. I don't think this one will die anytime soon. Uh, Angel of Unity is pretty good. But I think I need something that is more impactful at this point. I'll be able to cast that either way, depending on what they do. I'm going to keep Trellisara back, because that makes it awkward for them to attack. They can trade their Tovlar if they want to. I'm probably not going to trade. Wow, that's incredibly aggressive. So, let's see. I'm definitely going to block here. And I'm going to take out one of the puppies. Make him draw two cards. Do I have him draw two cards, though? Or do I take out one of the Luna? I think I want to have him just draw one card. I can afford them drawing one card. Well, yeah, I guess I can take out my Trellisari here. That was a bit of a mistake on my part. It should have done more. They messed up. Oh, there we go. Okay, that was pretty clever. So, opponent did pretty good there. Uh, I definitely made some mistakes. That might cost me the game. I never should have blocked with uh, Trellisara. That was a mistake. I forgot about the activated ability of Tovalar there. That's definitely going to cost me. That's a 2-3. Uh, they can give a trample, but that's all they can do. So I'm going to go ahead and block with the Luminous and give it two counters. Oh, at least the pup dies. Pretty good. Need some life. Make it slightly bigger. They're on day. Let's get that 
back. Oy, Tovlar is uh, really hurting me in this game. One of those where I just don't know if I'm going to be able to come back from that misplay earlier. I think I have to block everything, huh? So that's 11. I can bump it by one, so I need to block. So let's do this then. And... Yeah. Fortunately, I don't have a choice because they have one extra mana that can give something trample. So if I don't block this way, they're going to have lethal. I'm going to take four damage here. Three damage here. Did not give the wolf trample, that's surprising. Okay. Oh my goodness, they have another one. Okay. Valkyrie, followed by the Luminous Phantom, game of life, go to 12, not great. Find the time, at best. You can give, make something big in trample, yeah. This game is over. Unfortunately, I really blew that one. Okay, let's go to Robber Isn't. Um, well, I'm finally on the play, and it's a horrible opening hand. Um... That'll work. It's just not been a very good uh, series of games for me, I'm not going to lie. Misplay against the Wolves was rough, but then again, they also drew really well, and I didn't really recover. Um, I can keep that, keep that. Let's get rid of the Spellbinder here. Probably lead with the Prosper to keep it for a turn 3 Inquisitor. I go against Azori's control here. Oh, we're seeing Band. We're seeing a Monk. Interesting. Not sure what that means. Turn 3 Inquisitor Campton, like a pro. Gain some life, get some creatures. Trelasara is fantastic. So this is about as good as you can open up after not having a fantastic turn 1. But this is pretty good. I will happily trade my Prosper Innkeeper. Okay. okay, so that was actually a great turn. That was a really awesome hit off of Inquisitor Captain. Oh, there are a mage. Wow, a snow bant mage deck. Interesting. Okay, so Monk is going to get really big here real quick. I don't think I care. I think I'm going to let it go. There we go. Sweet. So I could play two of Sigardian of Angels. And I can tap both of these guys because of it. And swing for a lot. Sounds good because I'm going to gain some life too. Let's do that. Getting a bunch of triggers. Let's go ahead and tap the Monk. Get some life. Another Trelasara. Bottom it. And let's go ahead and play the other one. Have that. I'm going to probably swing for a lot, but I'm going to have to discard the Evangels as blockers. I'd love to keep that. And we're going to be able to swing for nine. No joke. Yeah, that was pretty good.
So next turn I can play the uh, captain. That's fine. What else? That's fine. So right now, if they attack with everything, I have lethal, so they can't do that. Okay, sweet. Let's go ahead and bring this out. So, not a hard choice there. And let's go ahead and just play aggressive. Trade one, kill one. Truly doesn't matter. Okay, so they're down to four. Like at this point, there's no reason for me to not be aggressive. So trading one off one creature is no big deal. Uh, yep, there we go. Sweet. So that was actually really good with the Inquisitor Captain showing off what they can do in a match. All right, going up against Play for Fun and Conquer. That's a pretty cool name. I get to be on the play. I've got cool stuff, but nothing to gain life. Still think I'm going to keep. Let's open with the tree line. Play Trevisara next turn, unless I find something that gains life. It's actually pretty good. Take it. Um, and I'm going to choose to make my Spellbinder big. Don't know if I'm going to play it on curve or if I'm going to go with one of these guys. Okay, I might go with one of these guys now. Uh, let's do Trelasara for Scrying. Continue to make Spellbinder big. There we go. Absolutely. Another pretty sweet, uh, sweet draws here. My opponent is on Mono White Snow. That is fine. So let's do this. Um, now I think I play... What do I do? Uh, too many choices. So, I could play Spellbinder, see what they have, get some taxes and a big creature. Um, I could also... I'm not going to gain enough life to make value out of this yet, so that doesn't make sense. I could hold with the Righteous Val play Righteous Valkyrie, but if they have another Skyclave Apparition, that would hurt. Voice of the Blessed would be nice to gain some life. I think I need to see what's in their hand, though, and make sure that they can exile more of my stuff. Let's go ahead and make this Righteous Valkyrie bigger. Dane is kind of annoying. Spellbinder, Captain. I think the Captain is the most painful one. I have more choices, so I'm not too worried. About like Redain or Spellbinder. It's annoying, but that's about it. That I did not expect. So they, they've got a very interesting wide build here. So they got they've got clerics. They're kind of like a hybrid between mono white aggro and clerics. It's not bad. Okay. Ooh, very, very sweet. So here, let's see. I can gain two life. I need three for this one to be valid. Um, but if I do this... Yeah, it's just not it. Okay, so I think I need to play the Righteous Valkyrie here. That makes the most sense. Or I play Lunar Veteran into Voice of the Blast. I can do that next turn too, and then if I have the Righteous Valkyrie already, then I would play Righteous Valkyrie, Book of Exalted Deeds to really get the value. So maybe I'll play this first. That's maybe too slow. I think Righteous Valkyrie is to play. Let's play Righteous Valkyrie to bump Wizard of the Blast. And let's play this. 
Boy said bus is now four, which is good. I can swing with D through six. Gain some life. So next turn I can play, depending on what they do here. If I was them, I would play. Okay, that's pretty smart because it negates this thing. Buys him some more time too. So that's not bad. Um, that's kind of a strange attack. Very strange attack. I think I'm going to start with Book of Exalted Deeds. I think I need to start creating some angels. There we go. So there's the Cleric's deck. Um, as you can tell, it can definitely pack a punch. Um, I had two games there that uh, didn't necessarily go my way. Uh, one was a bit of a misplay on my part for sure. The other one was just a really bad matchup. Mono Black. I really don't know how to win that game except for my opponent just having a lot of bad luck and I have nut draws and I have to be on the play. But other than that, uh, this deck has been doing really well for me. Um, the game you saw against the Wolves was the first one I lost with this deck against uh, Wolves. Uh, that's typically a really good matchup as is any other aggro matchup for me because of all the life gain. Book of Exalted Deeds can be very cheeky. I really like it. Um, Valorous Stance. I wasn't able to really show it off here, but it's such a fantastic card. Um, it's in standard right now, so that's where I got this from, but, um, overall just very solid deck. If I would play this in best of three, which I might do, uh, for sideboard, uh, sideboard, I could play a little bit more removal, like Valorous Stance, um, I can get some snake skins in there just to help out against, uh, um, control decks, just like a couple more elite spell binders, and actually the Apparition is not a bad inclusion, especially because you can hit it off an Inquisitor Captain, um, or maybe even a Brutho Cathar, so I know that those are not clerics, but they can be really solid inclusions in the sideboard against creature matchups. So overall, really liking this deck, um, I've been uh, having some really good success with it, and uh, if you want to try it out, make sure to check it out, I've got the link below in the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, um, and uh, I'm, I'm enjoying Alchemy, and I'll be playing a little bit more. So if you want to see that more, let me know. If you want to see some draft videos, I have been very successful with drafts as well. I'm happy to post some of those videos as well. Thanks a lot. Enjoy. And uh, until I see you guys in the next video.